So um, for my English class, introduce yourself. Roger, introduce yourself. Yeah. Hello, my name is Roger Carpenter. <laughs> I'm the owner of Fight Sports Club Hemet, California, Black Belt under Omar Sloan. And you've known me for like what? Uh, going on. It's over 10 years, right. right? Yeah, a decade plus, easy, yeah. Because it was when I was a real, real young kid. Okay. Yeah, Caleb was still in school. Or just finished. It was right, right, right after mom passed. So yeah. Okay. So the first question is, uh, what prior credentials do you need to own and operate a jiu-jitsu gym in Arizona? Um, as far as credential wise, you just you got to have the knowledge, right? You got to mm -hmm. have the black belt. You got to have the knowledge. You got to have the leadership skills. Um which I obtained over 13 years of training and teaching at various different schools and academies. So uh, a lot of schools out there right now that are open up by lower belts, but they're in a different position I am because they actually have to hire somebody like me to come in and take care of their school because they don't have the knowledge. So that was one of the reasons I waited until my black belt to go all the way in with the school because I wanted to be able to be self-efficient with it and take care of it myself. Because I remember the last time we talked, you just got your black belt. And because you remember the yeah, that was we did? September. Yeah, yeah. I got my black belt September 8th, 2020. And you were talking to me about how you need to get your professor stripes first. Yeah, well, um, well, those come to find out the more I learn, they kind of run like just in the Gracie lineage. That's like their little thing. Mm -hmm. And then with IBJJF and other places, they actually will award you your stripes to uh, keep you moving forward. If you run into issues like I ran into, because I got kicked out of my academy. That's what made me open up my own school. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So the, the next question is how long for the people that don't know which you know this is going to be watched by an entire english class uh, so how long does it take for like a normal person like say me for example to obtain their black belt on the average pending i mean we ask for you know three days training a week consistent is going to get you to the path of a black belt in seven to ten years depending on your commitment and your skill levels everybody learns at a different pace mm -hmm. so it's and it's just going to depend go. on your commitment your skill levels is what's going to get you there and with jujitsu you uh from what you told me last time you you trained with all walks of life like oh, everybody yeah. Yeah. from a from a seven-year-old kid to a 400 like right yeah 100 percent. yeah 100 percent have Kids classes varying from five year old to I think my oldest student right now is a 53 year old lady that it's dude, she does karate, CrossFit, and jujitsu. That's a bad just retired right there. That's what I said, dude. I'm inspired by her. Like days that I get up and then I see her Instagram, I'm like, I'm a piece of shit. Like I gotta <laughs> move it. You know what I mean? Like, like she's my goggins, dude. I'm like, damn, Natalie, let's go. Be like, stay hot. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like craziness. But um, yeah, it, it honestly just comes back down to your commitment, right? Like as mm -hmm. committed as you are, what you put into it, you get out of it just like anything else. Okay. So um, the question I have now, the next down is, um, is it for the love of the game? I, I don't I don't entirely know what that means because I, I, I wrote the question, but I just thought, you know, hell, I'll, I'll just ask. A um, little bit, both, we should say. Um, selfishly, yes, it's for the love of the game because it's my style, my academy, and I don't want to say run it the way because I want to run it. Yeah, yeah, but for the most part, dude, seeing the growth in my students and seeing my curriculum and my capabilities actually showing in somebody that has never done this sport before, that's worth it all, dude. 
Like I got five white belts that are competing and I watch them go in and they're playing my game. Like what I do, how I teach my curriculum. It's not somebody else's. It's 100% pure mine and theirs jujitsu, something that we've shared with each other. So I think at first it did became, it was maybe a little selfish, but for now it's just the love of the game all the way. You just want to like take the sport as far as you possibly can. Bro, it's going to go to the top, and I want to be right there with it. That's why I signed with Cyborg, though, you know? Like, mm -hmm. this Roberto Cyborg, 12-time world champion, ADCC champion. He's 43 years old, still competing in adults and beating their asses. Like, yeah, no, I – like I said, I always been in it for the love of the game, but now I'm in it for the long haul of it. Okay. <laughs> what's your business like, like what does it look like what well, you broke up on that one one more time uh what does your business plan look like uh as far as in game or to get it started uh or that, in between or let's let's go with in game because uh i have a couple questions down that go into like what it's like actually opening the school so okay. I'm just going to um, wait until I get down. Uh, end game is two more schools. Okay. I want to keep this one here. I want to open up another one. And then I want to build my retirement school. Oh, you're going to have a retirement school. Yeah, that's where I'll freaking settle in. I, I don't plan on staying with fight sports and cyborg forever, for se. I'm really trying to build my brand, come up with my logo, build my brand. So my first two schools, the school I'm in right now will probably always stay at Fight Sports. My okay. second one would be like an affiliate okay. of Fight Sports and myself. And then my third one will be just my branding. And then from there, if one of my students want to buy into my brand, then we'll go from there. Okay, nice. Did you need to get a business license to like start your school? Uh, not just for jujitsu. No, I just had to have the occupancy license and stuff like that for, um, I got my retail seller's license and that stuff comes with my LLC from my know your rank company from my gi and t-shirt company. So oh. that gives me my right to resell. So that way I could sell my merch and everything else. And then my uh, permission to operate or my occupancy through the building just gives me permission in the building. Actually, I was really surprised because I called the health district and I'm like, I'm opening up a martial arts school. What do I got to do with you guys? And they're like, nothing I'm like people bleed in here and you guys don't care all right i'll hang a medicine box we're good I'm not like there. just so, first yeah aid i mean kit. all they asked fine. was a first aid kit yeah you know they're like just put it up you're good just so, mop it you'll be fine uh, it was i'm yeah i'm religious about that but yeah that that we can that that we'll talk about <laughs> <laughs> okay so um why did you choose to open up this gym uh, well, dude, I, I chose to open up a gym when I freaking started jujitsu, like it <laughs> attached to me, like I attached to it. Like my friend Oscar was just sharing with our professor the other day. He remembers when I got my first stripe on my white belt and I walked over to him, I said, you know what this means? I'm going to own a gym one day. And that was big plans right there, uh, dude. That was on my first stripe of my white belt. And here we are, you know, 13 plus years later. And I'm with one of the biggest organizations in the business. So. Okay, so what makes this community possible in order to, like, open up a gym here? Um, Honestly, for me, that's a hard question because being born and raised here, it was kind of easy. But it, all my homies were here, everything, you know, like, I popped open a spot and everybody was like, Roger's got a spot, let's go. So now it's more, you know, uh, I'm putting myself in the community even more. Like, we're in the Rotary Club. Uh, I just did that pumpkin pie giveaway at the school. I'm trying to work with the casino to uh, train their security guards. I want to work with the schools to train their security guards more than the casinos because drunk people, whatever, but I want yeah. our kids to be safe. So I'm really like reaching out in the community, trying to be that, that supporter and, you know, a role model for our kids, whichever ones I can get in there and try to help them out. Let them know that, you know, just because you're ugly and tattooed doesn't mean you're a bad guy. <laughs> You, you, you are, uh, I mean, I say this because I'm, you, you were like the perfect person to make that statement. 
<laughs> uh, if I wasn't your friend, I wouldn't be allowed to make that statement. I'd probably, I'd, you know, I'd probably get killed <laughs> in the best way possible. I'm nicer than I look. I'm nicer than I look. Trust me, I'm. If there's anybody that knows that, it's me. So yeah, for okay. sure. Then again, I've known you since I was. Yeah, yeah. It's been a okay. wild run. Damn straight. Okay. Uh, what's your social? What's that? Uh, I don't know entirely what that is. I just needed to write the question down. Um, what was the what? What's my what? Social path. Social path? I'm assuming that they're like just getting out there. Um, socially, I guess it's kind of like what I was just saying, like working with the Rotary Club and, you know, I've been to Valley Wide, bro. I'm with everybody every day. I'm like, it's weird you caught me in a pulley shirt. It's usually my fight sports shirt, my fight sports hoodie. Like, I'm just always, wherever I'm going, I'm promoting the school and marketing the school and talking to people about it. So I think maybe that might answer the question. Socially, I'm always out there. Like, we go to eat at the local restaurants. I, I communicate with people. I work with a local solar company here that's ran and owned here. So when I go to the people's house to do the solar, I'm automatically, boom, talking about the jiu-jitsu because they may have kids, you know, inspectors. I'm automatically talking about it. Just always putting it out there in the ear and keeping it moving around. To, I guess like socially it's always a topic of it conversation, right? Hell yeah, bro. That's all I do. <laughs> all I do. That's all I care about. That was not all I care about. That was wrong to say. Yeah, you, that was a lot. I care about a lot more. <laughs> you, you know what I mean. That's kind of like me <laughs> and uh, it's kind of like me and wrestling. That's always it's always a topic of conversation. Well, I think I think it's, when you get into something like this that pushes you to your limits, like we've all had trials in life and things that push you to your limits but man mm -hmm. when you get on those mats and you got your best friends and these people your brothers and your sisters just pushing your body and your mind everything past these limits yeah it becomes like becomes probably one of the biggest passions and things in the back of your mind you know because i'm always troubleshooting thinking about the roles i had with a guy yesterday or the roles i had with him on thursday or a guy last week or what i can do to improve the school or you know so it's always there it's always self-growth Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next question, I mean, I, I feel like you already, yeah, you already answered that question. The question I had next was what made you want to open a gym here, but you already answered that because of the uh, love of the game question. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I can retouch on that for you, but yeah, I mean, honestly, like, I knew I was going to, it just, the way this one happened, it was weird because I got, kicked out of my other school and then I got offered a job just to be a professor. And the next thing I know, Cyborg's telling me like, open up your own school. I was like, holy shit. Like the next thing I know I'm in Miami, I'm in Cyborg's house eating dinner with him and his family. And really? I'm like, this is happening. Yeah, bro. I'll send you the pictures, bro. I Dude. dove off his back yeah. deck. Oh my like, really? His back deck, his famous one. He dies off of. Yeah. I have video of me jumping. Off. <laughs> yeah wow, dude and this dude. was all on easter he was like come to my house break bread with me let's sit down let's do this and dude that i mean this one like this one i wasn't ex it was like that kid you're not expecting you know what i mean he was like i'm pregnant yeah. i was like oh shit but it was like hey i got a school for you um me and my business partner we had mats mm -hmm. building and uh he wanted to turn on tournaments, put up tournaments. And I was like, okay, yeah, let's do it. So we're trying to organize tournaments. And then it just turned out that now it's a school. So, mm -hmm. so it originally started out that you guys wanted to uh, just organize a bunch of tournaments. And then that idea somehow yeah. like fostered into let's open up a school together. Well, yeah, I mean, I started the whole tournament thing. And then I, like I said, I got kicked out of my school. So it was like, hey, I got all these mats. I got no affiliation. Like, what do I do? And then I just started holding open mats with my buddies just so I could roll. And then it turned into like the word got out there that I was looking for something and word got to Cyborg. And now here I am. And as, as far as I know, you are extremely like when it comes to like something like that, where you're like really passionate about it. You won't do anything but that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it's yeah, no, no, it's literally it's been a battle, eat, bro. Sleep, like and like drink you get the right? Yeah. I have to though. You have to though. I mean with what 
Wait a second. Are we back? Did I lose yeah. you? Yeah. You lost me for a second. I have no volume. It was all right, okay. Give it a second. No. <laughs> there it is. You can hear me now. Yeah. Sorry, I got out of the truck, and then when I came into the house, did some weird stuff on us. Yeah. After you got out of the truck, I missed everything you said. Okay. Uh, yeah. So what I was saying, I guess, is it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like your your uh, scene writing, right, or your scripts. You, if you go, if you sit down and you go to write your script half ass, what are you going to get out of it? A half ass movie, right? Yeah, you're going to get a movie that's going to go straight to video. Exactly. It's the same with anything in life. Like, if we don't put it all into it, then we're only going to get out of it what we put into it. So, for me, yeah, it's if, if I'm not on the mats and in my gi, then I'm trying to figure out another way to market or push it or to make it work out the best or you know i'm sitting here with cynthia and we're going over things if it isn't the web page the curriculum the the geese how do we change our uniforms to make them pop different from anybody else's how do we change a logo up to make it you know what i mean yeah. how do we make the instagram pop to where everybody's going to want to be here or be on our page so it's just a constant battle and growth and pushing forward all right cool so the next question is um what kind of financial risk was involved with opening a brand new gym? Everything. <laughs> I mean, unless, unless you're a millionaire, it's everything, right? I mean, yeah. you put your life savings into it, you put everything into it, and I think that's what makes it so easy to be passionate about it because it's not just like something you go to and leave. It's, it's your whole life. Like everything you worked for came to this moment, so you're going to figure it out. You pretty much have to at that there. yeah i mean it's it's pass or fail and nobody wants to fail especially when it comes to your dreams so i think it makes it a little more easier when you're passionate and it's a dream that makes you actually want to do it instead of waking up and being like oh i really have to do this oh dude i still do that in the mornings especially now it's getting cold i'm like 6 a.m class oh somebody turn that heater on dude like it's cold as hell in the morning <laughs> yeah it me man <laughs> But I mean, even for like this, this is something I'm very passionate about and I love it. But I still have the mornings where I wake up and like, God, what did I get myself into? But, you know, we have to push through those because the day you stop is the day it ends. Exactly. If you don't keep pushing. If you don't keep pushing, then nobody else is going to do it for you. All right, cool. So um, the next question is, since I, I never found out you had a gym and like all that stuff until what they told me about it. maybe maybe a month he was like you know roger has a gym i was like he has a gym and he was like yeah and then he sent me one of the uh he sent me one of the posts and i was like oh cool and then i followed you guys because i knew about nice. you you do um like the clothing line and all that stuff all that all that yeah stuff. and uh I didn't know that you were opening your own gym until Mal told me about it. Oh, you know, for my class, I can't interview a wrestler because they're on the road 300 days a year. And, you know, right. I would love to interview Stone Cold Steve Austin, but I, I'm i basically a nobody, if that makes any sense. I'm yeah. a college kid in the middle of fucking nowhere, and he's a legend. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know for sure. I don't think he's going to be able to take his day for someone he doesn't even know to be like oh yeah hey how you doing kid like you know should have reached out to him anyways and uh the so what i thought about was um once i found out you had a school and i found out i needed to do this paper i was like uh like the last few papers that i've done talked about jujitsu and I've talked about how effective it is. And um, I just thought, hey, I know somebody with a gym. Um, and, like, he's a good friend of mine, so what the hell? I might as well use this connection for this paper. Right. Well, I'm, I'm happy to help you out in any way. I appreciate it, man. Okay. So the next yeah. question is, how did you know you would break even within the first year of all? Don't. You don't, dude. It's a gamble, bro. Nope. Everybody I've talked to that's a school owner, they say it's two years. It's two years? They say it's two years before you see anything. And I mean, this is coming from like Keenan. This is coming from the best of the best. You know what I mean? 
Mm-hmm. And like those guys are on an advanced program with their school because of who they are. So some guys, Keenan said his school is at the growth of two years where it takes some guys to get there in 10 years. So I think that's a reason why we also hit the ground running and we've been really like promoting and pushing because if the every day we're sitting still is a day that somebody doesn't know about us. Exactly. So, um, okay. so the next question is um, so if someone that's brand new to jiu-jitsu wants to actually start to like learn the craft right? um, out of all of the gyms in Hennett, what makes your gym the one that makes them go like yeah I want to go here to learn jiu-jitsu instead of going somewhere else come on Seth that's the easiest question in the world me yeah I, I well, yeah like <laughs> no I'm, um I know, but I need it for my class. They need to know. <laughs> I, okay, I, I'll, I'll hook you up. No, uh, honestly, one of the things like what we love about what we're doing with our program is uh, a lot of other places, man, they don't give you a chance to get caught up or even get the basics, right? So mm-hmm. at our school, we have a fundamentals program and then a beginner's program that actually gets you all their ground, you know, your your break falls, your sprawls, your all your stuff that's going to help you understand the basis of jujitsu before we throw you straight in there. Uh, there's a lot of academies that, that you know, you go in on the wrong night. You're just you're a guppy in a shark pond mm-hmm. and people leave because they don't want to be a beat up dummy. They don't want to be that toy. So um, going through all this transaction, we've actually reached out to a lot of students, ex-students. Students we've trained with, students at other places, and did a lot of stuff online looking at things and trying to market ourselves around the biggest complaints. And a lot of it was was like the lack of fundamental classes, beginning classes, and getting the basics in on people and just, you know, again, throwing them in the shark tank and just telling them sink or swim. A lot of people can't, are going to sink. They're not just going to go after it, you know. I get it when I started jujitsu, that's the way it was. Every school I was in was a battle school, but it's not like that anymore. We're turning into one of the bigger martial arts. So we need to we need to make it a more functional martial art for everybody to learn. It, like the thing is, I could tell you um, like for me, if I was to like just go into a jiu-jitsu school and like I mean, obviously I would go to you because I know you have a school. But if if I didn't know you had a school, I would just like look up jujitsu schools in the area and try to figure it out. But right. say since you said you offered the fundamental courses, right? Yeah. Um, and beginners, yeah. Yeah. So which one do you do first? Uh beginners. The beginners a four week program that teaches you all the basics, your sprawls, break falls, hip escapes, uh positions, you know. So like when we're like, hey, go to close guard, you're not like, okay, what's that? You know, or, hey, get out of this. You got an idea. We can help coach you into the next one. After that becomes your fundamental classes. Your fundamental classes now puts you into uh, positional moving, right? So now we've showed you stagnant positions. Now we need to show you how to transition from one position to another and what makes it fundamentally work, you know, because obviously you can't go from a closed guard into, you know, something crazy. You have to work your way up those steps, up a ladder, you know, to get to them. So, Uh, It's just basically just slowing everything down and making sure people understand it. You know, when you go to get your driver's license, they don't throw you in a freaking NASCAR until you go figure it out. Yeah, exactly. It's, 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 you know, go drive around, weave through these cones, park over here for me. So that's, that's kind of how we're directing our jujitsu right now is, you know, bringing it up. And honestly, man, I like, I see the growth. I got some students that came over from other schools and just like, just the growth we've seen in them. They're like, man, I want to give this belt back. I don't think I deserved it before I got here, but it's all good. We'll get them caught up. So it's just open to absolutely, I mean, obviously it's a jujitsu school, so it's open to absolutely any skill level. What's that? You broke up on the last one. So um, it's obviously a jujitsu school. So it's like, it's open to absolutely any school level or skill level, right? So wait, yeah, say, yeah, and that's why we been, run. Uh, if someone's been training ten years, they can like, and like they're a little rusty because they haven't been on. You can just like pick them up, right? Yeah, it's like riding a bike. You know, Professor Adam came back after taking so many years off. Came back and just started kicking everybody's ass. 
You know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's a muscle memory thing. Once you're on that bike again, you're pedaling and you're moving around the neighborhood. Um, and we also run like our classes on the schedule. You'll see, like it says advanced classes. And obviously those are for the people that are coming in that are more advanced and the competitors and these guys that want to push themselves. And then we have the beginners classes for what we like to call practitioners, you know, people that are just in there to learn the art, learn the self-defense side of it, learn, get some exercise in it, you know? They don't have to be in there with all my high level competitors getting beat up because they just want to try this when these guys are trying to win championships. Yeah, they're just doing it for fun. Yeah. Pretty much, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. So um those are all the questions I have written down because I need to write an eight page paper on it. it. Yeah, exactly. And like I, I have um Four sources already talking about uh, what it takes to open a jiu-jitsu school, like location, and, uh, like stuff like that. And uh, yeah. these are all from myself, I think. I have four sources. This will be my fifth, and I need to make another one. And after this is over, I'm gonna take it and like just like write write out the transcript and what it can like do. For the paper, and after I get done with the paper, I'll send you a copy. Perfect, perfect. I want to see those scripts you're working on too. Uh, I can send you the pitch I have right now. Okay. But it's 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 loaded with numerous grammar errors, and there's certain parts where it just like jumps from one point to another. And, yeah. Um, I'll say I'll stop recording this right now, and then we can talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got a couple more minutes because, yeah, let's talk about it real quick. Because if you're making the mama jiu-jitsu black belt and you're going to film locally, I'd love to use the school and I'll be in it being like the instructor if you want to do a quick brief thing of her being out of school. Oh, dude, totally. All right. yeah, I mean, if you're talking that kind of movie setting, let's do it. Get off this recording. I don't like your students. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Sorry, guys. Appreciate you. <laughs> well, if you guys need jiu-jitsu in any shape or form, Go see this man. He is please, really please. We are Fight Sports Hemet. We're located at 42151 East Florida. You can look us up on Instagram. Come check us out. All right.